Hi everyone, welcome, welcome. We've got an important conversation today. As you know, it is Mental Health Week this week, the 9th to the 15th May, and me and Carl, we've come together to bring you this amazing conversation. Um, Carl is going to talk about, you know, digital media and how it affects you, and I will be talking about parts to do with how that can affect us in terms of our mental health. So you're gonna be getting two different perspectives um, where we bring our expertise. Please note that this is a conversation. This is not about me. It's not about Carl. This is an open conversation so that we can create awareness. Um, so for me, I am Eve Mapanda. I am the mental health director at Africa Healing Foundation, and I'm very passionate about uh, mental health. I have also experienced my own mental health issues. Um, I've overcome depression, um, anxiety. I still go through anxiety as I've mentioned before, but I have found strategies that work for me to be able to cope with my anxiety and also with my depression. So for me, these conversations are important because it's not just about, it's for me, it's, it's creating that awareness, but for also to let people know that you are not alone in this. And I think one of the things that we spoke about with Carl was, you know, especially coming from Africa, it's important that we know that mental health is not a Western thing. It is a global thing. It's a global concern. And it's time that we start really talking about it, but not talking about it in, in a sense of sitting in that situation, but how can we start moving for, forward from this? So welcome everyone. Carl, can you please give a quick introduction before we get into the conversation? Awesome. It really lovely to be here. Hello, everybody. And uh, my name is Carl Leroy. And I, am, I have a background in mentoring uh, young offenders and children who were going through the care system. And I've dabbled in coaching. And what really fascinates me is the link between mental health and social media and how <clears throat> there's links between, you know, children being depressed and their social media consumption. There's links there. So I developed a digital detox experience um, that is designed to have, you know, anybody, doesn't have to be a young person, but it can be parents, you know, all demographics. If anyone's just feeling they need to let go of social media with support, come and do the digital detox experience and experience for yourself just how powerful having a focused time offline can be and how it can really really help family dynamics uh, shift perspectives and you know really can be an extension of self-care um, so that it, it depends on what you want to get out of having a digital detox experience it's about facilitating that for people uh, with the objective to improve their overall mental well-being and I think mental well-being is a very important uh, choice of words as well because although mental health is rife on the planet at the moment it seems to be in every demographic going up the levels of mental health are soaring so I'm, I, I want to spin it onto mental well-being and empower people to activate higher higher states of consciousness and you know be the best that they can be that makes sense. <laughs> Thank you. That is amazing. And we are going to actually, I want to start using that more mental well-being. So I, I love that you brought that up. So for mm. those people who are wondering why we chose loneliness, um, that's because uh, this week, the theme for Mental Health Week this year is loneliness. So we linked it to social media. That is why we chose loneliness. So um Sorry, I'm just getting someone in. So the title is, does social media play a role in loneliness? And this is a very important topic, as we all know. And, you know, for those of you who don't know, um, at Africa Healing Foundation, we've got a mental health campaign that is 
called mind plug please go on our page um have a look at you know the things that we're doing in regards to mental health and the work that we're doing at africa healing foundation to spread mental health awareness or rather mental well-being awareness <laughs> welcome mel welcome um we were just starting the conversation so um in terms of you know you carl you know, you've got the experience in regards to um, working with people when it comes to social media, um, getting people to step away from social media. What have you found? Do you know what? It's, it's I'm always learning. I, I still feel I'm at the very beginning of my game, you know, learning about all this stuff. And, you know, for, for years, I remember going as a kid, I'd, I'd, not be interested in computers back in it, you know, when they were coming out and stuff and kids were online and my brothers were online and I just couldn't be bothered with it. I'd rather do a handstand. So just seeing the, the shift, you know, since social media is, is, is really come into play over the last kind of 15 years and what, you know, the, not only the risks in terms of, you know, online grooming, county lines, all that kind of stuff, but it's just the way that social media can really manipulate our perspectives. And, you know, I watched The Social Dilemma and I was just kind of, which I, I it was, it was on Netflix, funny enough, and I would suggest everyone to kind of have a look at that. And it just is quite alarming just how detrimental being online can be to our mental health. And again, it's not the medium, it's how it's used because I'm not against technology. I think technology is amazing. Um, but there has to be a balance. And I think Russell Brand said, social media is like a superimposed layer of reality that has been prescribed to us. Uh, and so, and for us to all just kind of get on with, in a sense. And I think that's right. There's, there's nothing beats being face to face, but you know, I find the more we're online, um, it's just not as it can not necessarily be as authentic as being, you know, with the, a real a real person. Um, it's like a representation of us, like looking in the mirror. You're not what's in the mirror. You're here. That's a representation of you. This, you know, so it's an, an interesting concept. But I think what brought me to this point was seeing how many kids would be triggered. I was working with were triggered um, as soon as they got, you know, being online. And they'd come off and they'd play up and talking to them about their their um, social media consumption. The, the, the thread that was going through some of these children was they didn't feel good enough. They felt like they, was, they were comparing themselves to other people. And, you know, with the social media, the um, reality TV, you know, when that will come into play, it, it really has shifted... Um, a lot of things for people and I can that makes sense I can I can look at young people now and, and thank god I was I'm not going growing up with with YouTube and things like that I'm glad we kind of missed it do you know what I mean because it's hard the 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 responsibility of having to show up and you know it's hard for kids these days I think so yeah I, I guess I wanted I did went into families did some work for some siblings um and said to them look get rid of social media completely no tv literally go cold turkey this is what we're going to do do you want to do it and they all said yeah let's do it and within five days the flip the the, the split the 360 in the house was incredible and the parents were just like i can't believe this so i know that if you take away the stimulants and the mind candy you do a little bit of self-care inner work mindfulness whatever you want to do but get back to to yourself a lot of mental health issues do subside okay. you know? so I love that you said that and one of the things that we've chosen to do um, at Africa Healing Foundation this week actually is you know the, the theme is loneliness but our focus is men and you know this is coming on to you Mel actually we're, ha we're having an, um, an event on Saturday in Zimbabwe for men and what we've seen is, especially when it comes to social media, 
men are struggling they are they don't know how to talk and I feel like you know with social media is you see someone else's world and you feel alone and just coming on to you Mel I know you you were a bit late um yeah. Yeah. sorry I had difficulty getting on so I came through thank you so um, much the event. I came through the event um bright link instead it just wouldn't let me on but thank you for thank you. allowing me to come on no, um, thank you just introduce yourself around because uh, you know mel first of all men against mountains she's doing mm -hmm. amazing work um uh, mel just tell us briefly about um you know men against mountains the work that you do and just following on from what um carl was saying what your thoughts are and you know your experience working with men yeah um i started men against mountains a couple of years ago to help men link and connect with other like-minded men um we form connections through talking um on social media via social media um by men sharing their stories to help other men not feel so alone so we've made like thousands of connections through social media um so it has a real positive um effect on these men but I would say that if that is the only in social interaction those people are getting, whether it's a man or a woman, um, social media can actually make you feel quite lonely. Um, it can be, um, it plays its part um, definitely in, in loneliness, because if that is the only, like what Carl says, humans need to connect physically as well as mentally. And we're very tactile, aren't we? Well, most of us are. And we like smells and feels and auras and eye contact. So I think if, say, if a man is only being connected through social media, um, I would say, you know, that person will obviously feel lonely at some point um, in human form. So I think we need to get a good balance of, of both like what like what Carl said you know if you're only using social media to connect with people that is quite worrying um you know however positive it can be it can obviously um become a negative aspect you, it can make you feel quite isolated but then again we can be in a room full of people and still feel lonely um which is something that I I, I felt many times when you've like disconnected with yourself mainly. So that may be having more sinister. And um, we need to think about why we're feeling detached when we're in a room full of people as well. Oh, wow. That's really amazing. And I, and I loved that you touch upon that. And I just wanted to know from you, Mel, before we carry on, in terms of, because sometimes on social media, you know, you see, um, especially with the men, they, they will post something. I've seen this a few times where they'll post something that this is how they're feeling. And then, you know, they go quiet. And then all of a sudden you hear there's been, you know, a, they've died by suicide. Um, in terms of when we look at posts, what is it that we are looking out for? I mean, it's hard to, to, cause you don't know what someone is feeling. Cause you know, social media is fake people show you what they, they want you to see. So what are some of the things like, you know, with your experience in terms of like when men communicate through social media, how can one know, you know, when the right time to reach out is? It's really hard um, because a lot of men joke their way out of being okay. They use a lot of humor. They'll use a lot of banter to cover up and mask in how they really feel. So, as you said, you know, Eve, it is a highlight reel. We're putting our best bits up there. Um, so this is why my page is so important, because my thread is actually filled with people being actually quite authentic on there. They actually say, you know, I, two years ago when I started the page, I would have said something, my answer would have been completely different there was not many people speaking out, especially men, about really how they felt because they were scared of 
not people not necessarily liking the post, but any interaction to it, you know, people would skim past those because they don't know how to react to it. And I think we've come a long way since, since that time in within two years of, you know, when someone actually is put in, especially a man now, I don't feel too good today. I'm having a really rough day. You see the comment section is full. Um, so people, you know, I think it's about opening up and being authentic. And the more we can talk about how we really feel online, the more it allows other people to open up and, to, and allow them, gives them also, almost permission to speak and tell, say how they really feel. So there's more authenticity coming through now. Um, okay, there is part of social media that I find very false. And that's mainly, to be honest with you, Eve, on my personal account, um, Three Men Against Mountains and the accounts I follow, it's, it's very positive, you know, even if we're talking about something that's really deep and deep rooted in our feelings, there's a positive and response to those things. But on my personal account, on my social media, everything is just, oh, you know, lovely and filtered, over filtered. And yeah, I think it's very masked because I should think a lot of those people aren't really being authentic and saying how they really feel. Mm -mm. No, and I think um, if I'm being honest, I've been in that situation, you know, when I used to think about, um, I used to see people's lives on social media and I used to think about that could be me. And it would be like, you, you, you get a sense of loneliness in terms of, you know, are you the only one who's not living that life? Uh, until I got really comfortable with myself to know that, you know, I'm actually where I need to be. And I, I felt that for me, social media became toxic in a way where I had to now start to start training myself in regards to what am I actually going on social media for? I've got a business, you know, uh, we've got a foundation. So for me, I am very intentional in terms of how I use social media. And if there's anything that I feel is not aligned to who I am, I will take it out because that for me is important to protect my own mental health. And um, before we carry on, if anyone has anything, this is a conversation. If you have anything that you want to add, um, something that you've had or something that's resonated with you that you wanted to share, because we're here to have a conversation, we're here to create awareness, please put your hand up and we'll get you on to, to speak. So Carl, just hearing from you as a man, what are your own personal experiences um, from just social media, uh, and have you been in a position where you have felt, you know, that loneliness when you've kind of gone on social media and you've seen this world that you're not a part of? Yeah, to, to, to put it in a word, absolutely. I think I can be quite cut and dry. So as you know, I can just delete it and I wouldn't care, you know. Um, but there's, speaking of kids, kids, I will go back to your question, I just wanted to say, that some there's studies done where kids would rather have self-harm or have pain inflicted on them than lose their device that's crazy right um but going back to to yeah i, I sometimes feel triggered online and when you go online some days you're just not wanting to show up and deal with it because even seeing everyone else now everyone seems to be a coach and there's nothing wrong with that it's great but someone will be telling their story, you know, they're getting 25,000 pounds every month in leads. This is how you do it. And everyone's like, yes, my way's best. And sometimes you think, for fuck's sake. Um, do you know what I mean? And other days you're like, yeah, it really inspires you. And other times you're like, oh, for God's sake, not another one. And it can just get a bit too much. And that, that can bring on loneliness or, fears of in, or feelings of inadequacy. Um, am I good enough? And I think years ago, when we watched television, we was we was watching. I was mesmerised by the TV. I was like, "How the hell do they get in there?" I just I had this. I used to look behind the TV. I was like, "You know, hello." <laughs> it's crazy. Um, but everyone has now got their own reality show, and they're the star of their own world. So the it's it's very. Um, 
it's it you know it, it it's enticing isn't it and it's easy because of the dopamine and cortisol levels that get created or released when you get them likes or you know whatever it's easy to get wrapped up in it and not be able to regulate yourself and i think that with other addictions you know alcohol sex porn you know food whatever it is m most of them drugs there there's age limits on it and there's but there isn't there isn't with kids and um you've got young people you know as young as four you know three on on iphones iphones and it's like they're hypnotized and they don't communicate properly and i think that's a real worry um and i drifted off sorry because you was asking me about my my own personal <laughs> see i'll flip it out there um but yeah no i will talk about that in a minute but yeah i do when i get triggered online i have to just kind of completely cut off from it and i feel so good going into nature and it's like that was how it used to be and in the 90s it would be you know i'll call you at nine o'clock and we'd have to trade trade along a football pitch to get to the phone box and i actually miss that because people actually made an effort and it's interesting because i can delete my social media for three months and do you think anyone will fucking call me no no one cares so it's like you'll be pushed. You know, someone cares when they text you or they call you and see how you are. And it's just easy just to send a text or to see them online. But it's they're not really showing up. And I think it's important to, to meet and have them real connections. And I think it's now easier to hide behind a screen. And, you know, we're, we're now it's when the pandemic happened, you know, and is happening, people were put online more than ever. Mm. and that brought up its own issues for people, but it's like, it's now just easier to wear your pajamas and go up, show up for work and, you know, not really have to meet. But I think that authentic connection, as Mel was saying, we really do need to get together and, and be able to physically communicate because, you know, there's energetics at play here that we just don't get from screens. And so, yeah, going back to your original question, that kind of bothers me. Um, I think it's great. I think social media is amazing. I think it's really, really good um, when it's used for good. But I just think there's a lot of desensitized kids out there who don't know what it's like to be offline. And that's a problem, <laughs> I think, anyway. Oh, I love that. And it's funny that you say that because we went to a party the other day and, you know, it I, it showed me like how children nowadays don't know how to communicate with each other. Like, to go there and actually make friends with each other and actually start a conversation is so difficult for them. And they will be glued on their phones. Yeah. They wouldn't even know what to say to each other. So it's it's quite a worry because it, it, it makes me think, how is the world going to be? And how are people going to- It's like an, their it's like an inversion, isn't it? It's like, yeah. Sorry, Mel, I just want to say, uh, sorry, Eve. I just want to say it's like a mass social experiment. and. When you've got kids at a party, they're, they're missing the moment because they're too busy trying to capture the moment. They're not in the moment. Mm. You know, they're too busy to, to try to get, show people, you know, video record or whatever, but they're missing the moment and the connection with the people around them because they're too busy trying to capture it online. <laughs> no, so. that is so true. No, thank you for sharing that. Um, does anyone have anything they would like to add uh, before we get Mel on? Um, we'd like to hear from one of the men around here, other than Carl. <laughs> so please feel free to unmute yourself and join in the conversation. So Mel, in terms of like, I'm just curious to know what inspired you? Why Men Against Mountains? How did the name come up? Um, mainly for my love of mountains and how I feel when I'm out in nature and how like even just what Carl said, how we connect when, see a lot of men need to be active when they talk, when they openly start talking. So the whole point was actually to get men climbing a mountain in, in reality, as well as obviously, um, you know, the ups and downs of, of, of what the mountains mean when we climb them. There's always peaks and troughs um, in life. So, you know, our mental health will always be compromised at some point, every single person. And I think, um, as I said, men find it difficult to make start that conversation. 
Um, it's getting a lot better though. You know, more men are speaking out. I'm find, finding a huge shift in that now, which is through people like myself, but also the, the pages that I've also connected with. And it's had this massive domino effect. Um, so, I, you know, right now, more men are speaking out that we've still got a lot of stigma to break and um, don't get me wrong and um, there's still that you know men are weak if they cry men men are weak if they, they show their vulnerabilities but as i said my my feed is filled with that connect, you know people are connecting through social media but personally when i've i've felt lonely myself through social media was when I became a single parent um when my marriage broke down um it was a 20-year marriage and I remember I didn't have social media when my my children were very little and I went on Facebook and I started connecting with people that all over the world that I obviously knew um but I remember things like bank holidays and summer holidays and being a single parent when my people are off is in families doing their thing and I you know those were the times where I actually felt quite isolated and alone myself because I was just seeing all these people going and I'm sure there have been other people that were feeling like me that weren't posting themselves that were alone but all I was seeing was families, families, families. They're off doing their thing. They're all together being happy and I'm alone with my two children or they're with their dad and I'm all on my own. And it always became more noticeable over like things like bank holidays and holidays and things like that. Um, Christmases, um, you know, those were the times where I really noticed and I'm sure people, you know, on social media, when it becomes Christmas and they haven't got, close family or they're um you know they're not in touch with or things have happened through their family you know those are the times when people are gonna feel more lonely I would say and it magnifies it doesn't it yeah yeah and I totally agree with you I remember feeling like when I became a single mom I remember feeling the exact same feeling what you've just spoken about in terms of you know social media was the place where I'd spend my time but then it was you know the reality for me was I was looking at other people's lives but then it my own life was at the time was really bad and it really triggered me in a sense where I didn't know what was real and what was fake anymore it's 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 sort of like you, you start to think that is the life that you're supposed to live, what we see on social media. And for me, that created more loneliness. It created more heartache for me because I was feeling something in me that was a feeling of inadequacy and was a feeling of, it, to be honest, even at that time, it really um, made my thoughts worse around you know suicide. Um, it also made my depression worse. So it's it's almost as though there's two two sides to this. It's there's that you know where what social media can give you that instant gratification of having to feel that something like what Carl said, you know, when you when you get a like or something like that. But then on the other hand, when we really think about it, is the negative effect of the situation that you are in and how it can make things worse for how you're already feeling. And it's, it's, it's even something that's just triggered me now in terms of remembering the place I was at. And I'm just thinking about people who are actually going through that, people who are actually struggling with their mental health and their social media. I mean, for me, with the, I had anxiety and depression and I couldn't even go out. I used to have like the curtains were closed. I never wanted to socialize with anyone. So you can imagine so social media was my friend. Um, but then it was also making me worse because now I got, I got used to life online that I didn't, my communication skills were not there. I didn't mm -hmm. want to, I couldn't be bothered to go out. So I think in terms of 
when it comes to social media, I think I'm at a place where I can use it and I know what I'm doing. I'm being strategic. I'm in and out. I do what I need to do and I'm out of it because I've already realized. And I think when you're self-aware, you know, because let's, we're all human. We get triggered by certain things. Um, anyone who says that they don't, they're lying. Um, and it's important we know exactly what we are there for. Uh, you've got your hand raised. Um, is it Jasper? Is that how you say it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, Jaffer. Jaffer. Okay. Yeah. Hi, yeah, welcome. Uh, thank you. Your uh, conversation is very interesting. I'm, I'm a bit in the dark. I'm at work. I'm at work. I'm on my night shift. Okay. I'm, I'm, Where are you? Are I'm, you in Kenya? Yes, I'm in Kenya. Oh, welcome. Yes, yes, yes. So, so, so uh, this issue on social media and loneliness, uh, I, mean, I have an experience I would like to share. Mm. Uh, first of all, I'm a recovering addict. I'm four years sober now. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And uh, my journey started in rehab. So, so whoever is familiar with Kenya, you know, mostly, I don't know about other countries, but here 90% of admissions are involuntary. And I happened to be an involuntary admission. So I remember I was admitted uh, to rehab on April, discharged on July, and we were taught that we have to stay away from people, places, and things. So I had to cut off my friends who most of them were using. So I even changed my phone number. I changed everything. But there is one thing I didn't change. I didn't change my Facebook handle. I didn't change my Twitter. I didn't change my Instagram. So July, August was easy. September was easy. October, November, then came December. So December, still sober. So I go online and I see people partying, having a good time, drinking, smoking. I felt so left out. And I remember my first experience, it was that night. I, 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 I really cried in, in, in my room and I was like, is it really worth it to, to stay sober? You know, I felt like I had given up life for sobriety. And uh, uh, right now when you're having that conversation, when you're seeing social media being a trigger, is when it has clicked that that day, if I hadn't logged in into my socials, I wouldn't have cried. I wouldn't have felt lonely. I wouldn't have felt left out. But uh, I was lucky after that, I was able to talk to a counselor and a sponsor who, you know, calmed me down. And uh, through the time I've met now, I've, I've met friends, some of them who are even on social media. I've learned how to deal with the emotions of seeing my friends out having a good time and I can't be there because, you know, I'm not using anymore. But yeah, uh, in the first month, it was difficult. I cried two times that day and then uh, a later date. Thank you for letting me share. Oh, that is such an amazing, like I felt <laughs> that story and I'm sure we can all agree that, first of all, you speaking out what you've just said is this is how we're making change just by simple conversations like this. People might think that, you know, what we're doing is small, what we're doing here. But believe you me, I believe in the six degrees of separation and your message could save someone. And that's why I always encourage people to talk. I know Mel is waiting to say something because I can feel it. Mel, do you? Yeah, I, I really resonate with that. Um, I was not addicted to alcohol or anything like that, but and there was a time where I had to take time out away from the social circle. And I totally resonate with that. You know, that, you know, when you're trying to get yourself better or you're healing or, you know, as you, as you said, j -Peth, it's it's, you know, those environments you had to stay, stay out of because you, you know, could have quite easily 
gone back um and you put so much hard work in um so to stay out of social circles I, I can completely resonate how hard that was for you and you know good on you for sticking you know sticking with it um i do find that people sometimes forget though where you are and that you don't necessarily always have to socialize with a pint or with 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 alcohol you know you can go out for a nice meal with with a group of friends and and you know if they know if they are good friends and they know that you're going through certain things then everyone doesn't drink nobody drinks um or you can go for coffee you can still be connected with people in real life just because the drink or drugs is not involved if that makes sense um, you know, you can go into social environments like the gym or go to, um, you know, al you know, say if it was al alcohol anonymous meetings or meet people through, none of you are going to drink. So you can connect through social media that way with groups that might help you. Um, that would be a little bit of advice that maybe you can join, you know, contact men against mountains. There's loads of people that, are, you know, that have been sober for for God knows how long, and I, I follow some amazing accounts, um, and they could give you a lot of support um, with that, you know, and your social circles can change, what you do socially can change, it doesn't mean that you can't be social anymore, um, you just have to find different ways around sort of doing that, and I do believe when you come off social media, say if you, became, you came off social media, JPEG, sometimes people forget to invite you, because you're not in the Facebook group or it's not done on messenger in a, in a thing or a WhatsApp group or something like that. When you're not on social media and, you know, I've got a couple of friends that do not do social media, but they do get left out of arrangements for things. Sometimes they get forgotten about. So that can also be another reason why being on social, but using it in the right manner, still being connected, um, but at the same time, not being forgotten about if you weren't on it. Oh, that's that's yeah. really amazing. Oh, uh, Warimi's got her hand raised up. Let's yeah. go mental. <laughs> Hi, Warimi. Um, do you want to... I'm okay. Do you want to give a quick intro and let us know what you um, want to say? Yes, please. Uh, first, allow me not to turn on my camera. You know, it's a quarter to 10 here. 10 p.m. So we're already in our PJs. <laughs> Fine. Uh, yeah, so my name is uh, Wariyeme Karinge. I am uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Let's Go Mental Kenya. It's a community-based organization which I set up to create mental health awareness. Uh, now, I set up this organization because um, I am a person with lived experience. I suffer from bipolar 2, uh, depression and anxiety disorder. So I am happy to be here. Thanks Eve for the invite. I actually met Eve, I think like maybe a month ago um, online where we reached out and we found that we are so passionate about the same things and we're in tune with so many things and it was quite exciting and I'm looking forward to continue working with you. So, okay, I know you were talking about men and loneliness uh, for this session, but then I just thought I should just chime in on my own and my experience with the social media. So as I mentioned with Let's Go Mental, I am very active on social media because that's the main platform that I use to create awareness. So of course, this um, I have to be online constantly looking for content, trying to um, recreate content, trying to, you know, basically I have to be constantly online just trying to to, to create now my own content, which initially was okay for me. But then, especially this year, this year has been very difficult for me health-wise. I've been in and out of hospital um, due to my mental health. And so I found that, um, so in February, I completely cut off. I just went on a blackout completely. I couldn't deal with it. And the reason that got me into this state was because I follow quite a number of um, mental health advocates who, are also influencers and you can see their life and they're all dressed up and they're going for photo shoots and they are traveling to, I don't know which county or which country, you know? And then I was looking at myself and I'm like, what's wrong with me? I know these people have these conditions. How come they're able to live their life normally and I'm not able to? What's wrong with me? 
you know. Eve, I've mentioned to you that I have not been able to hold a job. I have not been able to run a business because of the severity of my condition. So you can imagine me having to be online and I'm just seeing people just doing these amazing things and people who I know have the same conditions. So I went on a total media blackout um, and I got back in February, end of February, but I had to because of the organization. I'm still not fully back um, because I still feel quite, quite overwhelmed sometimes. You know, there's just so much going on there and I just feel I can't deal with this. So yes, for sure, um, it has had extremely negative effects on me, even feeling lonely, you know. Um, I live alone, um, I'm not married. And like uh, someone mentioned about holidays, holidays also become very hard because you're just seeing people with their families. Um, people are just all over the place and they're posting photos and all I'm doing is just, I'm just in the house with my cat, you know. <laughs> So yeah, so I've, 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 so far I can say I've been able to find the balance of, since I went offline and then I came back online, I seem to have that balance of knowing when to, I'm going in, this is what I'm going to do and I'm out. Or am I going in for pleasure purposes for how long and then I'm out. So yeah, so that has been my experience basically with social media and loneliness. Oh, wow. Thank you for sharing. I'm, I'm gonna just give it to Carl because Carl has similar experiences in regards, I don't know, Carl, do you want to, because I know some of that has really resonated with you um, in terms of like, you know, business wise. Um, so do you want to share your, it's up to you if you want to share, like, I know you've shared with me, but I don't know if you want to share. So which bit did you want me to share, sorry? Just in terms of like business or what you had said before in regards to seeing other coaches and, just yes. the focus not being there. Yes, yeah, so I think that um, what happened was a few days ago, a few, a few of us got together from around the world who were digital detox mentors or coaches or just people who were, you know, like what we're having a, a discussion on the pitfalls of being online. And thank you guys for sharing your stories. I think it's amazing. And I think the, the thing that's coming through a lot is the, the feelings that we're not good enough. Um, and, you know, I think the more we're able to take ourselves offline and reconnect with ourselves, the more, the more empowered we become. And I think that when we're online, we're, we're, it's, we're, the system's built to speed us up. You know, so we're, we're constantly on the go. We're constantly looking for things. And, and the lady before, um, um, Warami, I think her name was, um, mentioned that she, she, you know, found content and she was, you know, her business was online and, and that she felt, you know, depleted after. And I think when you've got people that are online for, for, for their work constantly, that can definitely have a detrimental effect on how, they are when they're offline, spending time with their families, if they have families, or even if they're just being alone. And I think that if it's, you know, whether it's TV or social media, we're constantly wanting to be busy to stop ourselves from just being, because we're scared of what emotions are going to be triggered or what we're going to start to think about. I think, you know, people need to become aware that we're not our thoughts with a space between our thoughts. And so one of the techniques that I've used on myself and have, used, have, have shared with other people is just to, when you're going through that state of anxiety, is just to sit with it and not judge it. So, you know, even a few days ago, I went online and I can take weeks offline and I went online and I just, because I was scrolling, I couldn't concentrate. So I couldn't get any of my work done that I was meant to get done because I was just, you know, especially having ADHD as well. I was, you know, sped up to the point where I just couldn't focus on anything. And then the self-doubt kicked in and the abusive thought patterning start to happen. And you just, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm quite good at now being able to just sit with it and accept the moment that you're in and allow the thoughts to pass through you without judging them just let them come through and I think the more we're able to kind of do that and center ourselves um, the less likely we are to want to be distracted 
and social media will then just become like a side the sideline but i understand that you know it's hard when people have to spend so much of their time working online um and it's like it's it's by default i wouldn't have an email if i didn't have to i could quite happily chuck my phone in the river and be done with it but the system doesn't allow it um so yeah it's just finding finding a balance and it's it can be difficult but there is a, there is um I can't find it, Mel. Um, sorry, Eve. And there was a saying. Uh, I'll try and find it um, while while you're talking. But it's like if you come home to an empty house, sit down, have a cup of tea on the sofa. You know, it's up to the individual whether you see that as freedom or loneliness. Mm. You know. I like that. And yeah, I it's think- a perception, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's how we think of it, and I and I think that it, there's a certain there's there's a certain loneliness that is good for me. There's a solitude that allows me to think, to be myself, to explore who I am as a person, and it's realizing, you know, when that's healthy loneliness and when it's toxic loneliness. And I think it's really important that we're truthful with ourselves when it comes to social media, we're truthful with ourselves when just in life in general. Um, So as we start to wrap up, I just kind of want to hear from everyone, like, you know, what your take was, what, what was the moment that really stood out? I mean, for me, you know, Jasper's story really touched me and (laughs) please do keep in touch. Um, We need to have more conversations like this. We need to, you know, I'm so encouraged by this conversation and I really think that I want to have another one next month because this is something that I, um, you know, we want to grow this. We want to have conversations because someone's going to listen to this and that person, we can save a life. Yeah. We can save someone from addiction. So to know that, you know, it's okay to have these conversations. It, it's okay for us to say that, do you know what? Social media triggers me and not feel ashamed because you know i think i am i don't know about you all but i am tired of people you know looking down on people when they say that you know they're not into social media i don't like social media i can't stand it but i have to be there because (laughs) i i don't like it and i i feel like you know this whole new thing of you know you have to do everything there to be noticed and all this thing you know we need to be one of the people that actually start saying Yes, it's there, but sometimes it, I don't feel okay to be on there, yeah. and it's okay. Was, no, you're one hundred percent right. I just wanted to quickly say that I was chatting to someone the other day, and um, it's very, you know, she said about getting a Facebook together and having to, you know, create um, content and things like that. And I thought, what did we do to drum up support and awareness before social media was here? You know, we went out, we canvassed, we got flyers, you know, we called people on the phone. We, You know, there's all these different things that we don't necessarily do in the same vein. And it, and I think, you know, if we can kind of get back to, to that somehow, I think it could be really, really cool, especially for, for young people who, you know, maybe don't communicate together how they, or have never known that kind of thing. Because, you know, we'd go out and play all day in the sun and, because of what's been going on the last few years, people are very reluctant to let their kids out for fear reasons. And so they're stuck on Candy Crush Saga all day. (laughs) And it's like, and then they can't talk properly because they are so desensitized and they're they're not speaking properly and all all these kinds of problems that have come through. And I just think speaking to young people, they're like, this is, we we all need a a digital detox in our, in our lives. There's, there's no facilitation for that. When is your next I, one? Let us let the audience well, listen, know. Come, if people want to take do it, coming offline is. I mean, Mel did it. It's, it's such yeah, a small part okay. of what it's about. When are um, you having it? When's the next one? Let, uh, maybe let June. It depends if the if the demand is there. You know, maybe maybe June. I think it's it's great fun and the the turnaround people have like doing it because. We can never, unless we're actually physically meeting up at a retreat, we can't 100% be offline. You actually, you can if you want, but you still get an email sent and a short video. You'd, you'll be put in a Telegram or a WhatsApp group where you can communicate, although you're off all the apps and you're, you're minimising your TV usage. 
So it's up to you how deep you want to go. But there's tools and there's things we work through each day. And because everyone's experience is different and what they want to get out of the experience is different, you know, it's not one shoe fits all, but there are things that tie us all together. And I am a, a firm believer. And because the consciousness in the group is so concentrated, things just kind of happen. Spirit takes over and, you know, things start to really shift for people. Um, and I think if there's supply and demand, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll put another one out. But yeah, I just think it's, it's about opening up the conversations on why it's good to just ditch the apps for a bit, you know, get mm. back to ourselves. The most important computer of all, yourself. <laughs> Amazing. Mel, did you have any closing thoughts? Yeah. Um, just from going on um, what the, the lady, I can't remember what her name was, that spoke. Sorry. Yeah, I think, you know, our, our social media feed, if we can get the balance right, um, there's okay, it's okay to delete and unfollow people that aren't giving you that, what you need. So if you feel that you're the imposter monster or the imposter syndrome sets in because you're following influencers stroke advocates, um, get back to the people that are real and raw and are influencing you in the right way. Because if you feel like, oh, this person is better than me and that imposter monster, I would unfollow them straight off. They might be doing great work, um, but that get your feedback to a bit more being authentic. Because these influencers are mental health advocates as well. Um, as you said, you know, they've got the same um, diagnosis as yourself. Um, and you don't feel like you're doing enough, I, I would just take them off your feed. There's nothing wrong in that. And that might be a bit harsh, um, but you should, you, your feed should um, be authentic. It should fire your belly. It should do all those things. And, you know, I just want to say, if you are struggling with anything, be, you know, talk to people online, Find like-minded people that you can really connect with because those are the people that will take you where you need to be. Mm. Um, you know, we can use social media in the right way. It, yeah. does, it doesn't have to make us feel lonely. It doesn't have to make, and you know, feeling lonely is a natural human emotion, but mm -hmm. it's when we become detached from it. Um, that's when, obviously what I said earlier, when it becomes worrying. Yeah. Um, so I think we just need to surround our people. Everyone should just go through who they're following and, yeah. and maybe take, you know, have a really remember who you're actually following and look through. And if those posts aren't doing things for you, unfollow. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love that. And I think um, let's remember that some people, although they say they are mental health advocates, there's people who are out here who it, it's, it's about fame for them. So yeah. we also need to discern when we are following people in terms of the people who actually are going through, you know, mental health issues, the people who are there to actually make real change. Because I think that also mental health, you know, it's, it's almost become like sort of like a fashion trend that everyone wants to yeah. be on. And so we have to really discern the people who are actually doing it for the good. Um, so yes, I think that was a really interesting conversation and we've come to the end of our round table talk. I am looking forward to having another one. <laughs> that went quick. It's great. It was really good, Eve. Thank you so much for inviting me. Sorry I was late. Yeah. Sorry I can't, I'm a tech phobe. This is the thing, I, I'm, I'm completely tech phobe. I was like, <laughs> how am I gonna get on? But thank you so much. And yes, let's do some more. We can do different topics. It's a great idea. Yes. Much thanks to you. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you, Arimi. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Pulo. Thank you, Jasper, for your story. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you, Carl, again. Thank you, Mel. Have a lovely evening, everyone. And bye. Bye. Thank, thank you. you.